Hi chess fans, this is one of the most famous and beautiful games lost by the world champion Capablanca, as his opponent, Grandmaster Andor Lilienthal, sacrificed his queen, and with the series of forced moves followed by the queen sacrifice, he left Capablanca no other choice than to resign and shake his hand with a smile on his face, as Lilienthal writes in his annotations to this game. Lilienthal played white pieces and started with d4, and Capablanca played Nimzo Indian defense, bishop b4, a3. This leads to the exchange on c3. White has two bishops now, however, the pawn structure is damaged, b6. The idea is either to fianchetto the bishop, from where it will exert uh, pressure on very important central squares, or to put it on a6, uh, attacking the uh, weakness on c4. Lilienthal played f3. In order to prepare e4, uh, building very strong pawn center. And Capablanca, in order to prevent e4, played d5. And Lienthal played bishop g5. So, as you see, this whole fight goes around the e4 square. As the knight is uh, controlling e4, bishop, by pinning it, renewed the e4 threat. h6, bishop h4, bishop a6. And e4. This is a pawn sacrifice which would be very dangerous to accept if Capablanca ac accepted this pawn sacrifice by playing d takes e. Lienthal would have played f takes e, and now in order to take on e4, black must first unpin the knight by playing g5. However, this move seriously weakens the king side and the black squares. Bishop g3, knight takes e4, and after bishop e5, you can see uh, what a great compensation for a pawn white would have. All dark squares are weakened. White has a dark, dark squared bishop, while black doesn't have in order to protect these squares. And uh, the rook is currently under attack, and the king side is weakened. Uh, Castling would be dangerous because of uh, queen h5, h4, bishop d3 with a terrible attack. And f6 is impossible because of queen h5 check. That's why it would be uh, dangerous. And of course, Capablanca didn't accept this pawn sacrifice and played bishop takes c4. It looks like a pawn, uh, black won a pawn. However, white immediately returns it by capturing and playing queen a4 check. Queen d7, queen takes c4. And Capablanca offered a queen exchange by playing queen c6. However, of course, white, as white is planning to uh, move a very strong uh, center it would and start the attack on the king, of course, it's for this purpose, it's much better to keep the queens. That's why uh, Lilienthal played queen d3. Knight bd7 developing, knight e2, and now rook d8. The idea is to create a very unpleasant for white x-ray. Uh, for example, if white now makes one of the moves he's planning to make, c4 or f4, if c4, knight e5 is possible now, thanks to the rook on d8, now uh, white cannot capture the knight, and knight e5 would also attack c4, and uh, the queen, and it, uh, c4 pawn would fall. Or instead of c4, if white played another move he would like to make, f4, then knight c5 this time, and uh, e4 would fall. You might think why instead of rook d8, for the same purpose, black didn't uh, castle queenside. That would be too dangerous. Uh, in this case, white would be able to sacrifice the pawn on c4 by playing c4, and now knight e5, it's not so good because of queen c3. Of course, a black cannot capture with a queen as the knight is under attack, so the only move would be knight takes c4. And now the c file is open where the king is placed, and that would be very dangerous for black. Rook c1 attacking the knight, the only way to defend the knight would be b5. Now a4, and all the lines on the queen side are open, as you see, where the king is placed. Uh, a6. Castles, uh, king b7, for example, a takes, a takes, and queen b4. With knight c3 next move, uh, b5 would fall, and uh, black's position would be hopeless. That's why instead of castling, Capablanca played rook d8. And Lilienthal just castled. Uh, now Capablanca made a waiting move, he played a5. 
And Lilienthal, before starting his uh, main idea, F4, with uh, further advance of pawns, he decided to play queen c2 in order to move away from this unpleasant uh, x-ray. And now f4, c4 would be real threats because there is no, there would be no queen e5, queen c5 moves anymore. Kabalanka played queen c4 in order to block the c-pawn. However, f-pawn still can uh, move further and uh, Lilienthal played it, f4. You might think, why not e5, which looks uh, strong, uh, as a strong move, because it attacks the pinned knight. However, it's not so good because of g5. And now, if the bishop uh, retreats, the knight would get a great uh, blockading square on d5. And if uh, e takes f, then just g takes h, and black's position is better, as f6 pawn would fall and black has a g-file. That's why uh, Lilienthal played f4, and now after f4, e5 is a real threat, because now uh, after e5, uh, black won't have g5 move, as the pawn on f4 took under control this square. That's why as e5 is a real threat, Capablanca had to unpin his knight and played rook c8. And now f5 came. So Lilienthal wants to open the central files in order to start the attack on the king uh, who is stuck in the center. And Capablanca uh, tries to prevent it and keep the lines closed. That's why he played e5. d takes e. And now Capablanca took on e4. If instead of this he captured the pawn, then Lilienthal was planning to play knight f4. Knight is heading to the central square on d5. Now, uh, castling for black is bad, of course, because of bishop f6, uh, destroying the king side and starting a very strong attack uh, on the king. Uh, that's why the only move that looks uh, natural would be knight d7, uh, rook d1, castles, and now knight d5 would follow uh, with many threats. Fork, for example, f6, destroying the king side. So that would be bad. That's why Capablanca played queen takes e4 in this position, as the queen is protected by knight. And if white captures the queen, uh, black would capture back with the knight, uh, saving the knight too. However, uh, Lilienthal in this position found a wonderful combination. I offer you to pause the video and try to find this great combination, the idea not just one move, but the whole idea. So it is queen sacrifice, as I already told you in the introduction. E takes F. Uh, Capablanca has no other choice than to accept the queen sacrifice. And now we can see the idea. Lilienthal captured on G7 with tempo, uh, forcing black uh, to play rook G8. And now the king, black king, has no squares. f8 is under the pawn's control and uh, e7 and d8 under the bishop's control. And if white manages to check on e1, that check would be deadly. And uh, currently, as currently the knight uh, abstracts the uh, file, it's very easy to solve this problem by playing knight d4 with tempo. Uh, both moves f takes g was with tempo and knight d4 comes with tempo, centralizing the knight and opening the e-file. And now deadly rook e1 check is coming and the queen is under attack. Uh, Capablanca played queen e4. If instead of queen e4, for example, or queen d2, uh, all moves are losing here. Queen d2 would be followed by rook e1 check Knight e5 is the only move in order to vacate the d7 square for the king. Rook takes e5 check, king d7, rook d5 check, king e8, and rook e1 check. Uh, as the rook is protected by the bishop, black would have to uh, capture on e1, and white would have uh, material advantage. If uh, queen takes c3, then again, uh, rook e1 check, king e5, rook takes, king d7, Rook e7 check, and if king d6, then uh, fork is coming. And if 
king d8, then rook e3 with discovered check, and black is losing the queen. That's why Cabablanca played queen e4. Rook e1, of course, knight c5 in order to defend the rook, rook takes e4, knight takes e4, and the final move of, of the combination, rook e1, pinning the knight. And white would get a uh, material advantage. Rook takes g7, rook e4 check, king d7. And here Capablanca resigned as, uh, without waiting uh, Lilian Tile's uh, move, as rook e7 is coming, and this position would be absolutely hopeless for black. So I hope you enjoyed the game, and uh, if you did, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. See you.